Okay, so I got some negative comments on my house tour video, which is fine. It's to be expected. You know, when you're a minimalist saying, oh, come see this minimalist house tour, what are a lot of people expecting? Pristine white walls, pristine white carpets, and all they got was my pristine white face, right? I mean... Let's be honest, I'm not like that typical, like, oh, perfection minimalist. That's not my, that's not my goal, that's not my dream, that's not how I roll. But that's okay, people were expecting that. One woman asked me, you know, close the toilet seat when you're doing a room tour. I guess it bothers some people to see inside someone else's empty toilet. I don't know. She also said, I hate to tell you, but your house is a mess. As, as if I didn't notice or realize that. So my point was to give an unfiltered, raw look at what our house might look like on a daily basis. A little bit of a disaster? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's probably way worse if I wasn't a minimalist. But uh, the reason I'm making this video is because one comment kind of stood out in particular, and this was a sub 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 subscriber. This was a subscriber who decided to unsubscribe because the way in which my house apparently is not very nice to the children. She cited the fact that we only have four chairs when we have five people in the house, four chairs around our dining table. Also, um, because we have three kids in one bedroom, which is not okay, especially since we have a room just dedicated to our own needs with all my fancy, fancy lighting equipment, <laughs> which... Okay, this is, and this, I mean, ah, uh, this comment. So, first of all, this lighting equipment costs like 25 bucks. So, I mean, if that's expensive to you, that's fine. That's fine. Um, but as far as like the table, only having four chairs and that proves that we don't want to meet the kids' needs and like three kids in a bedroom is unacceptable when we have other rooms. My kids... <laughs> They would not be happy if we if we tried to reverse this on them, okay? So, for instance, four chairs, five people at the dining table. So I said, so often we just, you know, throw a kid on someone's lap and call it good. Usually, it's my lap, since Aaron's lap currently contains the budding baby. And my kids prefer sitting on my lap often to sitting in their own chair. So that not meeting their needs, you know... That's uh, that, that, that's not that's just not true. That's not not the case. Sometimes I pull up a chair for myself so we can all have our own chair, and it's fine. Works fine. Okay, uh, so that you know most people probably have enough chairs for everyone in the family. So that's you know that's its own little thing. But putting three kids in one bedroom and having that be unacceptable that really blows my mind. So you know how we do here. All right, on this channel, we like to pretend that all of the comments are with the best intentions. We read them in a tone that isn't like sassy, like, uh, and that's not acceptable. And you no, we look at it as the person who is honestly trying to help and give a valid opinion that is constructive criticism. So let's pretend for a second that my kids didn't like these things. Maybe they wanted to sleep in their own room, which they don't. They, they prefer all sleeping together in the same room. So maybe it's just one of those things of, you know, whatever you're used to. I don't know. But let's pretend for a second that this comment is something that maybe we need to take to heart because I think you should do that. You should never just write off someone's criticism, even if they're doing it in kind of a rude or blunt way. So this begs the question, when you're a minimalist and you have kids, how far is too far, right? I mean, where do you toe that line between letting them have whatever they want as far as toys or just their own room, I guess, or, you know, whatever, versus you being a middle school, like, sorry, you're not allowed to have any toys or any things. You will live on rice and water, and that's just it. Like, <laughs> and I guess so, uh, this is my personal opinion. This is my view, my philosophy, and the wording in the comment was that, you know, clearly the children are not a priority in this family. But I think it depends on what your priorities are for your children. For instance, you are correct if you are telling me that clearly the comfort of the children is not a priority. 
I would agree with that. It is not my goal to make my kids as comfortable as possible. And I think that that is something in recent generations that has like come to be this mentality that like a parent's goal is to make their kids happy all the time and comfortable all the time and fitting everything that the kid thinks of as their needs. Now let me tell you, if I based what I gave my children as their needs, Damien would live off of chocolate. That is all, all that he would ever eat. He would just have chocolate all up on the face, all up on the clothes. You know, that's why I wear brown. So his chocolatey chocolate isn't as noticeable. So that's, you know, he would just eat chocolate. The girls, I don't even know. They would probably live off of just candy. If they didn't feel like going to dance class on dance night, they would just not go. If, you know, it would just be their whims. Their whims would take over. And that is what we call spoiled children, of course, right? Spoiling your kids. And some people think that is a valid form of showing love. And some people, that's the only way they know how to show love. So I am not that person. <laughs> I am not going to spoil my kids. So yes, the comfort of my children and them being happy in every single moment, that isn't my goal. That is not my priority for my children. My priority for my kids is to build character and to give them a strong, solid foundation in their faith, in their family life, in their interactions. I want them to be productive members of society in the fact that they know how to suffer a little, I guess, for the greater good. I don't know. It's weird to even like talk like this because three kids in one room is not suffering. They're still small children. They're all ages six and under. Like this is how is this a thing? How is how did we get to this point where it's the idea of like what would be acceptable? Like, each kid should have their own room with, like, their own computer and TV and air conditioning unit. And, like, they should never even have to talk to the other people in the family, right? Their own bathroom connect. Like, what? 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 No. No, 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 no. Like, my kids, I do not believe in this, like, right to, like, all your own personal little, like, living. Like, why Why should a child have their own apartment? Okay? Just why? That blows my mind. If you can't provide for yourself, you're living in these quarters with these other people. You're not going to have your own space. Like, I don't think that's healthy. I don't think that's a good thing. Because when you have your own room, I feel like that lends itself to you thinking, you know, that you're kind of more the focus of things. Like, you, you, you become entitled, I think. Of course, that's not always the case. People, I had my own room for a while when my brother got older and moved out. And got, actually, no, he got his own room for a while. So I had my own room for a while. Was it better for me or worse for me? I don't know. All I'm trying to say is, look, <laughs> I'm sure there's a line. <laughs> I don't think I've crossed it by putting three kids, there's three small children in one bedroom. I also don't think I've crossed it by having one less chair at the dinner table than we have people in the house. I think that's like fine. Right now we're reading our kids Little House on the Prairie. You know that series? I don't know if you've read that little house on the prairie it's about this prairie family right these pioneers who lived out on the prairie in a cabin that the dad built and they did not have a lot of the things like they all slept in one room uh, they're on the floor right now where we are in the book because no beds have been built or anything and it's like <laughs> when you read that and you see how people can be happy in just a log cabin where they don't have like running water and they have an outhouse and they all sleep in the same room. How, how can they possibly be happy? We might wonder because they know what matters. They know what's important. Okay. Because they live to serve God and serve each other. And that's like it. Cause they're just trying to like live. <laughs> and we think that we need like all of these things, all of these things. So like when I see comments like that, something like, Oh, you're depriving your kids by not, Giving them each their, oh, here you go, three-year-old, here's your own room. Like, what? here's your mas the master bedroom. We have many master bedrooms because the house is full of masterly people. No. That makes me even more sure that I'm doing the right thing. Because I want my kids to grow up in community where you help each other out. And if we're in a tight space, everyone is in a one bedroom, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> it's just... Oh, it's silliness. Isn't it silliness? I don't know. You let me 
know how many kids you think is max to like put in a room, right? Am I, am I overstepping it here? Do I need to like, I don't know, give, we need a bigger house apparently. We need, we need, I don't know what we need, but apparently I'm doing something wrong. But I think I'm doing something so, so right. But I could be wrong. Only time will tell. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, keep it simple, question everything, and stay radical. Love you, bye.